Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, hello. My name is Gabby and welcome. Now today's video is about a case that just gets under my skin. It baffles me, the conclusion to this case, because I feel like the justice system just completely failed with this one. You'll see what I mean when I get into it. But I came across this case about a month ago and I saw that the 20th anniversary of this girl's disappearance was coming up so I decided to just take a little bit more time on doing my research and just do it on the 20th anniversary which is today. Felt like it was appropriate. So with that being said, let's just get into it. Tara Lynn Smith was born January 6th, 1982. In August of 1998, Tara was a junior attending Central Valley High School in Redding, California. Redding was a small rural town in Northern California surrounded by mountains to the north, east, and west, and farmland to the south, a place where people felt safe. On August 22nd, 1998, Tara left her home on Tarsi Way somewhere between 5 to 7 p.m. to go for a jog. She was never seen again. Like in a lot of cases, especially with teenagers, police chopped it up to her just being a runaway. Even though there was no evidence to prove that she was a runaway, she didn't bring any belongings, she didn't tell any of her friends she was planning on running away, there was no signs pointing to it being a case revolving around a young runaway. Her parents who raised their children as Mormons claimed that she had normal teenager problems, but running away was completely out of her character. And even 20 years later, they feel like they know who was responsible for her disappearance. Before her disappearance, Tara and one of her friends recently signed up for a Taekwondo class. And this martial arts class was run by a man named Troy Zink. Zink was a 29-year-old married father. You wouldn't really look at Tara and think that she would be the kind of young girl who would get involved with a 29-year-old married man. You wouldn't really think that she would be the type of person who would get herself into a situation like that, but she was, and she did, and it's very unfortunate, but her and this man had a relationship, a secret relationship. When she first started this class, she had just a little bit of a crush on this man. It happens sometimes when you're young with an older person, you know, you kind of have this little like crush on them. And Troy Zink knew that and he took complete advantage of that. When Tara started these Taekwondo classes, her parents were a little bit overproductive. They wanted to see if this man was trustworthy, if it was okay for their daughter to be spending so much time with him and be learning from him. And they asked a bunch of their friends and people who knew him and everybody told them that this man was a good guy, that he was somebody who could be trusted. Her parents did not find out about their relationship until after she went missing. They had no idea. They found love letters that their daughter had wrote to Zink professing her love to him but stating that what they were doing was wrong. In one letter she wrote, I know that what I'm doing with you is wrong. There's no way to overlook this fact. It's against God's will and we both know it. This man though knew that he had a lot of control over Tara. One of her friends after her disappearance told authorities that Troy told Tara on many occasions to never tell a soul about their relationship. Of course, besides his reputation, that would completely ruin anyone's reputation, knowing that a 29-year-old man is with a 16-year-old who was taking his Taekwondo class. Other than that, it could ruin his family, it could ruin his entire marriage, he could lose all of that, but also he could face jail time which he didn't want to because he knew how bad jail was. He spent a year in jail before. He was a convicted felon who spent a year in jail for a 1993 spousal rape charge where he put a knife to his wife's throat to get what he wanted. So not only did this man have a relationship with an underage girl, he had a history of violence and spent time in jail for those charges, also, he was the last person to have seen Tara 
the day that she went missing. He told authorities that during the evening hours of August 22nd, 1998, Tara called him and told him to meet her near her home around 6.30 p.m. He said that during their time together, she asked him for $2,000 and that when he told her that he couldn't do that, she became very angry and told him to drop her off at the intersection of Old Alturas Road and Old Oregon Trail. In my opinion, this is the craziest thing out of this entire case and probably most cases I've researched, but he said that after he dropped her off, at the intersection, he went up to the mountains and prayed for five hours. And that he made it home around 11.30 p.m. Think about that. Now in no way, shape, or form am I saying that it's weird for somebody to go to a quiet location like up in the mountains and pray for a long period of time. That's not what is weird. <sighs> I am saying that there are five hours where this man is unaccounted for. After he dropped her off at this location, he supposedly went somewhere for five hours. Nobody knows where he is for those five hours. Is he actually up in the mountains praying? Nobody has any idea where he was for five hours. Nobody saw him. There's no proof, no alibi. He was just up praying in the mountains for five hours while this girl vanished. Her parents think that the entire story about her asking him for $2,000 is completely made up because Troy Zink really tried to push the story of Tara running away to police. So her parents think that the $2,000 was just kind of a little extra to tell police to back up the entire theory that she ran away. Like, oh, she needed $2,000 and that's why she ran away. She needed the money to skip town. Troy told authorities that Tara had mentioned to him in the past that she did want to run away. Her parents do not believe this though. There were those letters that they found that were unsent to Troy where Tara was saying that their love was against God's will and that they needed to end things. So her parents believe that Tara met up with him that day on August 22nd to end things completely with him and that possibly he became very angry because of this and did something to her. Police searched Troy Zink's home and found no evidence. All they found that could be tied to a crime was his collection of guns. After Tara's disappearance, Troy did serve four years in prison for owning those guns because he was a convicted felon and he was not allowed to own any weapons but he was ruled out completely as a suspect in the disappearance of Tara Lynn Smith. The big question everyone is asking is why are investigators the only one who haven't named him as a suspect when everyone else feels that he is? It is a missing person investigation. I have categorized him as a, a very strong and very critical witness. There was one unconfirmed sighting of Tara on the evening of August 22nd, 1998. A witness came forward claiming to have seen a woman matching Tara's description in the passenger seat of a full-size dark blue 1976 Ford pickup truck with mag wheels and a yellow tailgate. The man in the driver's seat was an unknown Caucasian male. There was no police sketch done of this unknown Caucasian male because the person didn't see that good of a view of him and wouldn't be able to give a description of his appearance to a sketch artist, but that is a supposed sighting of her. It's unknown 100% if it was Tara or not. Still to this day, 20 years later, today on August 22nd, 2018, no arrests have ever been made in the disappearance of Tara Lynn Smith. What we want more than anything, neither you or anybody else probably has the power to give us. We want our daughter back like she was on August 22nd. If you have any information about the disappearance of Tara Lynn Smith, you are urged to call 1-800-843-5678 or the Shasta County Sheriff's Department at 1-530-245-6025. This is not where this case ends though because 18 years after Tara's disappearance,
parents in 2016, something very strange happened that may possibly be linked to Tara's disappearance. On November 2nd, 2016, Sherry Papini disappeared while on a jog a few miles away from where Tara Lynn Smith disappeared 18 years earlier. After the 34-year-old mother of two disappeared, her husband Keith actually reached out to Tara's parents for support because of the similarities in their disappearances. Sherry's husband, Keith, even turned to Tara Smith's parents, Terry and Marilyn, for advice. He knew what we had gone through, so I think that's why he reached out. He just wanted some comfort, some advice on you know, how to deal with that emotionally. Not only did these women disappear within kind of the same area, they looked very similar. They were very tiny. They had blonde hair. They were fair-skinned. They looked kind of similar if you do look at their just overall appearances. But the strangest thing of all is that they actually used to know each other back in the day. They went to the same high school and they were pretty decent friends. Tara's father said, I thought from a self-preservation perspective, I felt bad because Keith had so much hope and so much confidence that she would be found. I kind of thought that he might need to accept the possibility that she wouldn't be coming back and in my mind a very real possibility. I didn't have a lot of comfort to offer him how do you tell somebody a few days after their wife's gone missing that she's probably gone for good. She was not gone forever though. There is a big difference between Sherry Papini's case and Tara Lynn Smith's case and that is that 22 days after Sherry disappearance, she was found on Thanksgiving morning of 2016. She was found 150 miles south on a highway. Her arms were bound, hair was cut, she had been branded on her shoulder and was extremely skinny. She told authorities two women abducted her and held her captive, but she didn't know who the women were. When she was found, which she was supposedly released from being held captive, like these two women just let her go, which doesn't happen a lot of times, People were in shock. I mean, Tara's parents, Tara's sister, her husband, her friends, everybody just couldn't believe that she had been found. It is very strange. There are a lot of similarities between Sherry and Tara's case, but a lot of people do believe that they are just simply coincidences. And another thing that I really have to mention is that a lot of people, even authorities, believe that Sherry made the entire thing up, which is crazy when you think about it because she was found malnourished, in horrible condition, bound up, she was branded. Why would anybody just make that up? Me being me, I don't know how you could just make that up, but the reasoning why people think she did is because a lot of people who are held captive are never just let go and it's usually never two women who abduct somebody, and also because Sherry had a past history of wanting to hurt herself. I just think that there are crazy things that happen in this world, and you can't really just say, oh, this can't happen because it doesn't happen a lot. So I personally believe her story. I don't think anybody, unless you are absolutely insane, would just make up this entire thing. If you do want to know more about Sherry's case in general, John Lorden here on YouTube did an entire video about her case. I will link it down below for you guys to check out if you do want to learn more about that. It is unknown if Sherry and Tara's cases are actually connected or they just do have a lot of similarities, but of course, thank God that Sherry was found okay and that her entire family got a resolution and that she's doing a little bit better. From what I've read, she is not the same after this. She spends a lot of time indoors. She doesn't really go out much, which is very, very sad. But I do hope that, of course, the Smith family can get a little bit more resolution also with Tara's disappearance. Tara's family still believes that Troy Zink is responsible for her disappearance. Her father says if he's smart enough to keep his mouth shut for the rest of his life, he may never do any time. It is heartbreaking and very frustrating. Almost 20 years have passed and he has gotten more comfortable, changed his name, and thinks that people have forgotten. We haven't forgotten. I believe that he took her life that first night that he was with her. Um, they were seen driving together, and his phone records show that he was in some remote areas, and I think her body's out there. 
I know that people are going to want my opinion about everything and I do have an opinion to give and I think that 99% of the evidence points to Troy Zink being responsible. I mean, if you just look at the general information about Troy Zink or whatever his new name is in current times because he changed his name, how can you think otherwise? This is a man who had a sexual relationship with a minor when he was married with children. You gotta be pretty disgusting to do that, in my opinion. He's untrustworthy as hell. He was a convicted felon, and what he did to serve time is absolutely disgusting. I'm talking about the entire rape charge. That's just... He has extreme anger issues, and... There's five hours of time where Tara disappeared and he is completely unaccounted for. Nobody has any idea where he actually was. I just hope the Smith family can get a conclusion also when it comes to Tara's disappearance. Any family deserves that, in my opinion. And I just, I just feel like there wasn't justice served in this case at all. Like. I don't see how any any case could be brought to court and the judge could see all this information and not try to push it any more in the direction of this man being guilty. But this man could have just dropped her off and something else could have happened to her. I mean, I don't know. Crazier things have happened, but I just think that this one's pretty obvious. I would like to see it see justice and see I would like to have a grave a grave to visit um, but it's been, it's been 12 years I haven't I haven't given up on that really but of course, let me know your opinion about the case. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I've been gaining a little bit more subscribers lately, so hi to you guys. Welcome to my strange little YouTube channel. And of course, let me know any more cases that you want me to cover on my channel or any videos that you want me to do in general. And I love you guys so much, and we'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. And if you guys don't know, I have a Patreon page, so a huge shout out to my patrons. I'm going to have some exclusive content up for you guys very soon. Thank you for the support. I love you guys so much.